All right, guys, we're back with War Number Three in Alliance Wars Season Twenty Seven. Main account has a unique team of Iceman, Venom, and a six-star rank two undupped Doc Ock. Uh, I had to kind of figure out between my two accounts um, who I wanted. I did want to get a Doc Ock on the team for Path Nine here. I don't have him, uh, I had, so I couldn't bring the the Awakened Rank Three. Um, on the junior, but the the six star rank two is is still going to do the job for me. So we got just one fight on path nine on phase one. It's a hazard shift uh, Hulk, uh, sorry Red Hulk, and Iceman's going to take care of him no problem. And I also plan on using Iceman for the hazard shift stun immune node in the boss circle. So stick check that out one that one out at the end. Now, uh, I will do the Path 5 in a second, but first we have this first mini as a mojo on Power Snack. We've done this one with Doc Ock in the past, um, and uh, it's probably a little bit easier with uh, the Awakened one, because I can get some of the some power gain, I guess, back, and technically I'm supposed to be able to siphon some of that healing back, but heal, the heal, uh, like the... The, the life steal is, is kind of broken on uh, Doc Ock at the moment. And if he's unawakened, he can't do it anyway. So this works out fine. I, all I have to do for the most part is I try not to dex. Uh, if I took off dex, sure, that would be easier. But for the most part, this works out fine. Just going to take that special two on the block. Get back into the parry heavy game. Get some nice damage there uh, on the detonation of those of the triple debuff there here we're just now here's for the most part I was doing great and I think I took a little bit of extra damage just at the end I think I dexed once and that wasn't <laughs> and I took a bunch of degen damage but other than that everything else was going going pretty much uh, smooth sailing there was the one the one dex and you can see the the degen damage from that one was not great but we come in, drop a special two, and one more hit should do it. So still pretty happy with how Doc Ock takes down that mojo. Now we're back onto path five. We've got the junior account with a nice team of six star rank threes, Doom, Magneto, and Guillotine 2099. This uh, ebb and flow knockdown. Uh, I know why Dark Ock's here, because if you knock him down, you're going to have to worry about uh, getting auto blocked. But he's hashtag metal. Magneto wrecks this fight every single time. The fights are sped up ever so slightly. And uh, I am boosting for almost every fight. I'm just uh, in in the... Uh, I'm trying to save time. Uh, try, again, trying to keep the videos down to a little more than 20 minutes. So I speed them up just a little bit. And I, do, uh, I skip uh, some of the details on the boosts. So if you see my PI jump up. Uh, sometimes that's most likely what it is. And I'm not running, like, uh, damaging masteries. I'm not running recoil or double edge, anything like that. This Ebony Maw is super annoying. Uh, there, he's got heavy hitter, so there's no good ways to, um, like, the only good ways are, um, I guess if you're good at repairing, but here I just have to go with intercepts. Uh, to get my openings, or bait and a counter special one. Uh, Doom, I, I like Doom against Ebony Maw. Ideally, I'd like a, a science champion, but even still, this actually works out really nice because you want to be able to knock down uh, Ebony Maw just to counter his um, regular abilities and for the node, and having the mid-combo stun with, the, uh, with Doom just makes it so much easier. Next, we have a Mixed Master Korg. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, we used to take this fight all the time. The last few seasons, I don't think I was taking this fight, so kind of shrugging off the rust here. We've got our friends putting on the uh, a White Magneto pre-fight for us so that we don't have to worry about Korg shrugging off any of the stuns. And then just get back into the medium light mediums, um, just kind of getting used to the... Uh, Mixed Master again against this Korg. Um, and ideally on this fight, I always like to build up to a special two and drop it as soon as his shield is shattered, just like that, so he cannot purify any of that. Uh, there's some of the rust there. I took the end of that special two 
uh, and getting some bleed damage there. So that was kind of annoying, but that's just shaking off the rust right there. But the, uh, the White Magneto pre-fight comes in clutch for this one and for another fight with um, later on where it makes the, uh, I'm trying to remember the node, but we'll get to it, with the uh, medium dashes that make them uh, debuff immune. But even though they're debuff immune, they are not immune to the, uh, the passive stun from the White Magneto Guidance pre-fight. See, this special two here was not great. It was just as the uh, shield was coming back. So we purified, I think, two out of the three incinerates there. I don't know what happened. I just took a combo to the face, but we're fine. We'll go back in and finish this one up. It's not the greatest, but we get it done. Okay, one more special one, and I think that finishes it. Okay, next up we've got this domino here. Um, this actually has good use of the global node because this one has a global node untouchables. So it's like when they dex, then they can get, it can reduce the damage and you have to intercept them to take it, take it down or else you're not gonna be doing, doing any damage. This one also has Footloose. So luckily, I've done this one a bunch of times with uh, Warlock. You can see she already has two of those charges and I'm not going to be doing a lot of damage, but luckily my dashback intercepts are uh, on point, which is what I normally do against Domino on this node with, with uh, that I've done before with the Warlock, and it was working with Guillotine 2999 as well. So I got rid of those. So every time she does one of her like passive decks, she's going to get one of those charges. She also happens to have Recoil on, which just made my life a lot easier for this fight. Um, luckily. Uh, I think she did it. She had built up to a special three, and my power drain uh, worked uh, nicely. Here, always make sure you're keeping an eye out if you're unlucky, so that you know when or when to or not to dex her special one there. But for the most part, I was pretty happy with the performance here um, against that domino. And again, the damaging masteries like recoil help out a lot. All right, back onto path nine. This one's super annoying. You can see I'm at full health, and then magically I'm going to be at half health because the game crashed. So that was super fun. So a waste of some potions. So I got to heal myself back up and then go back in. So technically that counts as a death, but I'm not counting it for uh, in terms of deaths. But we do have our, uh, I think we do come, I think we do have our first death of the, uh, the war season. So if you're, uh, you know, interested in that, keep watching. There's a death. It's coming. Not this fight, but it'll it'll be there. But uh, yeah, we used to do this fight Venom against uh, Spider Ham all the time. Even on Window of Opportunity, done when I open, he shreds it. He's perfect. Now again, here's something you learn something new every day in in Marvel Contest of Champions. I haven't fought an Air Walker in a long time. I have an Air Walker, but I ne never use him, and definitely not in the defensive uh, capabilities. So here, I went in with Doc Ock thinking that I'm going to be able to uh, take this guy no problem, just do my usual Doc Ock thing with him. But the issue is that also I thought because he was going to be power gaining, I'd get some power locks and I wouldn't, and it would, uh, you know, that would help. That was my strategy here. Problem is, is that I got that passive Dark Tide on me, which is going to apply a cross fight. And what's going to happen is that I did not realize that by doing this fight and then also wanting to use Doc Ock for the next fight against a Hyperion, that that was a big mistake. And I will show you what happens next. So this fight, I'm feeling pretty good. I go into the Hyperion fight thinking, okay, I do this fight all the time, parry heavy, and I don't have to worry about anything. I'll shut him down for the entire fight. Uh, even though he'll go indestructible when I get to two bars of power, not a big issue. But I go for my first uh, parry heavies, and my power lock is disappearing at a rapid pace. And I could not, for the life of me, figure out what is going on here. Why isn't my um, power lock sticking? Right? Just disappearing super fast. And then I remember that it must be the cross fight from Airwalker, which, as I get a special three of the face, it reduces the potency of power drain power lock. 
and power burn by 70%. So I end up taking a special 3 to the face. Luckily, I got that 20% reduction and limited the damage. I'm also a 6-star champion, so I can get some of the adrenaline healing back. But then I'm going to have to go and take another special 3 to the face. So this was a, uh, you know really annoying uh, situation to be in and if I would have realized that I would have taken somebody else against that air walker and then saved uh, or let somebody else take this Hyperion so there we go I gotta take another special three to the face because this but I guess you learn something new every day and next time I face air walker I'll have to make sure that I don't plan on using the uh, that champion afterwards or just remember not to rely on or check the abilities because he has different crossfight abilities for each class type so i'm not going to go through all of those right now but for tech it reduces that power drain effectiveness which was really annoying all right next we're path five so this ebb and flow intercept um immortal abomination no more redoubled determination they got rid of that so here i can uh this was going to be my um fight with guillotine 2099 to get a charge with because I was planning on taking the APOC boss with Guillotine 2099. I hadn't done that in a few seasons, and was eyeing that fight from the start, seeing that I could bring Guillotine 2099 against this Immortal A-Bomb. Uh, and again, here I'm just going to push him to Special 1, back off. Even if I take a few little bit of chip damage blocking some of that Special 1, I just want to make sure that um, I don't get hit. I don't want to lose my combo here. I do get a few little intercepts. Um, which help increase the damage a lot. Um, but uh, And I think I go for an intercept at one point, but my uh, Digicloak saves me, which is always nice. So I think at a certain point I was trying to find openings. If he was already at, like right there, I tried to go for an intercept. Luckily the Digicloak saved me and kept my combo, and like the, the Awakened ability kept my combo meter from going which definitely uh, helped with this fight, because it's kind of a slow one if you can't get the uh, intercepts in. Again, just baiting special ones. Nothing too crazy. But the goal is here is to get him down to 5% and drop a special 3. Luckily the Mortal A-Bomb was nice and kept throwing those special ones, so that's always, uh, that's always helpful. Alright, almost down to 5%. I might get him down to like 5 or 4% here. There we go, drop a special three, and pick up the uh, charge there so that we can use Guillotine 2099 for the APOC boss fight. All right, next up, we have um, Thor Ragnarok. Again, Ebb and Flow Intercept, Mighty Charge, that's the note. Mighty Charge is the one where um, you can't really get the reliable parries off because when they dash in, they're immune to debuffs. But if you, um, so you either have to just parry the light attacks or with the white magneto pre-fight, you can avoid the mighty charge. So here, I know why um, they put Thor Ragnarok here because if you intercept him to get the fury, then you get risk of getting auto-blocked. Because he's hashtag metal, I don't have to worry about being auto-blocked by Magneto, but he tends to shut down the node altogether. So sometimes even if I go for the intercept, I won't necessarily get the fury, but he's going to crush it. I messed up my timing there a little bit um, and let him gain uh, that power gain. Luckily, he throws his special, no problem. And then uh, we go ahead and finish this one off with another, uh, I can't remember if we just throw that special uh, one or two here. There, we do get the intercept off, get the Furies, drop that special two, and he's done. So, quick fight there. Okay, next is Mr. Negative. This is the first time I'm fighting Mr. Negative in war. Um, I decided to go with Doom because we could. he would be able to benefit from the White Magneto pre-fight. 
So there you can see I can get the reliable um, parries, and then I just have I I'm just not I got clipped there. I'm not used to fighting Mr. Negative. I did try fighting a few duels, but uh, I got clipped a couple times and took a bunch of damage. Then tried to get into a nice rotation of actually just using the special one, siphoning some power, dropping a special two here, and let the incinerates do some work. Um, of course, I forgot there about the uh, inverted controls there for a second. Now I'm taking a bunch of um, a bunch of damage over time. Take another uh, sp like special hit to the or heavy to the on the block. So it was a little frustrating. Tried really hard to clutch this one out. Just block that special, and then again get clipped. I, I not my best performance. And this is the first time I fought Mister Negative in some type of uh, in competitive uh, alliance war. I didn't really have the ideal champion because I had uh, too many other counters that I, I wanted and, we, and I thought this was our best option. So I'm gonna go in and I was hoping right here that this heavy attack was gonna finish him. It doesn't crit. I take that special two on the block and I leave him with a tiny little bit of health. That's our first death of the season. I'm going go in with Magneto and finish him up. Now we're into the boss circle. We have a Hulkbuster on Recovery Vigorous Assault. He's hashtag metal. Easy fight for Magneto. Don't really have to worry about um, him going unblockable with his healing at the end of the fight because Magneto is going to drop a special three well before then. And I'm not even going to see that, that, um, he that uh, healing buff show up at all. So we're just going to build to a special three, get those prowess up, and drop a special three on him. Another easy uh, Magneto fight. So there we go. Drop a special three, finish with 100% health, which is always fun. So there we go. Next, we're going to go back to the main account. We've got a Kingpin on Hazard Shift Stun Immune. Iceman is the perfect counter here, in my opinion. So I don't really have to worry about anything. Um, even though he goes unstoppable with his heavy, there's usually enough time to counter his heavy. Uh, like the unstoppable disappears just in time to attack in. So I'm just going to keep um, spamming special ones keep baiting his special ones, rinse and repeat, and it is no problem against this uh, kingpin. Just let the, um, the cold snap tick away, let the frost bites do some nice damage when they expire. So pretty straightforward uh, fight here. Again, if there's any other content that you guys want to see in the future, or if there's some boss fight that you're having trouble with and I don't have it up on the channel, then let me know. I'll be glad to, to put something together, throw something out there. Always looking for stuff that people are interested in seeing. So there we go. Iceman's almost taking care of this guy, barely taking any damage. So very happy with how this one turned out. Next, uh, I think we have another Magneto fight. Okay, second last fight, we have a MODOK. Again, Spry, Limber, Brute Force. Um, I don't even need the pre-fight here um, because Magneto is... Because um, MODOK's metal, so Magneto... Uh, ignores limber when they're hashtag metal so I can parry heavy the entire time build up to a special three and finish it off I don't even know if I get to a special three because he's going down so fast <laughs> I think we just get to a special two maybe yeah special two then one more combo and he's down and last we have uh, our third boss fight in a row Going for a third boss solo in a row to start the season, which I haven't done in a long time. I haven't taken the bosses in a few seasons. 
So here we go. The plan here is to try and bait heavies. I've already got the charge with Gate 20 2099. Try and again hold that block, try and bait heavies as much as possible. Gonna go ahead and throw that special one and then go back to bait heavies. He's melting pretty fast. I'll go ahead and block the first part of that special two and then evade the la evade the kicks and attack back in. Again, I'm not perfect at evading his specials and I'm not gonna start doing it now on a war boss. So I'm just gonna continue going with what I'm used to, how I fight him in uh, as a boss in Alliance Quest and how I used to fight him as a boss in Alliance War. So pretty happy with how this fight went. Seems like my usual uh, way of taking down Apocalypse. And Guillotine 2099 is just uh, melting him with those degens. So there we go. And thir three for three on boss solos this season. And we will see you guys in the next one. Good luck.